Justin Trudeau was the first world leader to speak with Joe Biden, the president-elect, and they covered a lot of ground in that call. Obviously, the COVID-19 pandemic, Buy American, Keystone XL pipelines, and tensions with China. But what could change under a Biden administration and what can really happen now? Because Donald Trump still refuses to concede the election or even cooperate with a transition. Could Canada even come under fire from a lame duck president in the final months of his term? To find out, we're joined now by Canada's ambassador to the United States, Kirsten Hillman. Ambassador, always a pleasure to have you on the program, and I hope you and the family are well. Um, Prime Minister and the President-elect, uh, Joe Biden, obviously talked about a lot of things. Let's just start with the pandemic, which is critical because it impacts everything, border trade, the economy. What could change or what will change regarding U.S.-Canadian cooperation on this file, maybe on the border, for example? Yeah, thanks very much, and, and, and great to be with you. Um, well, I guess I'd start by saying that for, for Canada, the, our approach to the pandemic has been since day one guided by science and the advice of our experts. And that has to, you know, that, that relates to what we're doing domestically and the choices that we're making domestically. And it absolutely relates to how we're dealing with our partner here in the United States. So managing the border, for example, um, managing our critical supply chains for PPEs and other, other critical um, materials. Um, nothing is going to change on Canada's side. We are going to continue to approach uh, the fight against COVID based on science, based on experts, and based on the facts on the ground as the, as the pandemic evolves. Um, and, you know, I have every expectation that a Biden administration will do the same. But before, you know, before we get there, it's, I think it's important to point out that our cooperation with this administration, with the Trump administration, in relation to COVID has been very good. We have had very open and collaborative right. uh, dialogue on the border. We have remained highly coordinated on the border. And we have had also really good cooperation on supply chains for PPEs. Yeah. So I have every expectation that that will continue. Yeah, the cooperation is, has, has been there with the Trump administration. But, you know, as you know, it's a five alarm COVID fire down there right now. And it, it's very hard to get under control. Um, let me just move to another key issue, uh, Keystone XL pipeline. It is very widely known. Joe Biden wants to kill this. He said it a lot. Powerful interests who put him uh, in the president-elect seat have said the same thing. The prime minister and the Canadian government support it. In that call, was there any signal that Joe Biden was open to a negotiation on the Keystone XL? It's crossed the border already. Or does he still say, sorry, we're going we're gonna to rescind that presidential permit? Yeah, so, so as you say, Keystone XL, is, uh, is, is supported by the government. We've been making the case for it here in, in D.C. for a very long time. We continue to do that, including with uh, the Biden administration. I think that uh, we will have to see how those conversations unfold as he moves through transition and takes office. But we have a good story to tell on Keystone XL from an environmental perspective, from an engagement with communities perspective, and of course from a jobs perspective, which is essential right now. And just to, just to say too, that the conversation around energy is broader uh, than Keystone. You know, We have uh, enormous potential for partnership in hydro, in nuclear, in solar. And so we have a broad conversation that we're going to be able to, to pursue with the Biden administration. Yeah, I, I'm sure you do, but as you know, it would be very tough to budge him off Keystone, but, but I know these are early days. The other big issue is China. Um, the two Michaels, Spavor mm -hmm. and Kovrig, as you well know, have been in that Chinese prison for now past 700 days. Did the Joe Biden tell Justin Trudeau, yeah. the prime minister, that he would help on that, that maybe the U.S. would drop the extradition request for the Huawei executive, Meng Wanzhou? Anything on that that might help release the two Michaels? So the Michaels, I guess maybe to start with China generally, um, and what we expect from a Biden administration, which is what we have seen from Democrats here in the United States, is enormous support uh, for Canada with respect to the arbitrary detention of the Michaels. Um, and again, uh, based on the conversations we've had so far, I have no doubt that that support will continue. I think that they are, they are committed to working with us to find a legally sound uh, resolution to this problem as soon as possible. So exactly what that will look like and the timing, of course, I can't speculate on that. But where, I, where I'm absolutely confident is that we will have a good partnership with this administration right. in trying to continually 
uh, try to get those uh, those um, R. Michaels out of. But out of is it part of our strategy to get the U.S. to dump the extradition request? Look, Donald Trump signaled that he could do that. He'd already politicized this when he was trying to work a trade deal with China. We know this. So if Joe Biden could say, look, fine, we'll dump the extradition request and reset the relationship and re-ally about China on other issues, possible? Yeah, I, you know what? I'm not going to speculate on what, he, what decisions he may or may not make once he's brought in and fully briefed on the whole situation. There is a lot uh, of different um, issues at play with respect to the U.S.-China relationship and with respect to some of the prosecutions that they have ongoing. So he's going to have to get fully briefed up on all of that. Um, but we know that they will be deep uh, partners with us on, on dealing with this very challenging relationship and the time we're in right now. Ambassador, Joe Biden can't get briefed up because the Donald Trump administration uh, is still alleging massive voter fraud. They've got no evidence, but he won't concede. They're not allowing Joe Biden access to some of the key transition documents in order to brief him. And there's concerns that Donald Trump in these last lame duck period, the last couple of months, may lash out at countries who have already congratulated Joe Biden, like Canada. Are you concerned about that? I'm not concerned about that. Um, it's widely understood here, you know, that President-elect Biden will be the next president of the United States. There are processes that are underway, litigation, recounts, as all Canadians know, and people are watching carefully. Um, but those processes aren't uncommon. Uh, they're getting a lot of attention right now, obviously, in this particular moment in time. But there was recounts, uh, there were recounts in litigation in 2016, in 2018. Um, and so from a legal perspective and from a process perspective, the U.S. system is, is very capable of managing the time that we're in. Uh, and, and we're going we're gonna, to, you know, watch. And what we know for sure is that on January 20th, a president will be inaugurated here in the United States. Yeah, okay, I know that. Um, but let's, this is not 2016. This is not 2000. This is a president that is totally different. You know that. The allegations that he has made that the entire process was fraudulent is incredibly worrisome. Um, from a Canadian point of view, are you taking different action to because of the chaos surrounding this transition? Are there, is there a different process uh, has it impeded your ability to work with the Biden team? Yeah, so so I guess what I'm trying to say is that the process is unfolding. Um, it is unfolding in terms of a Biden transition team developing policy, uh, rolling out that policy. Um, we had initial platforms that were made public during the election campaign. Those are being elaborated on. Uh, through the transition time. Teams are being put into place to handle and manage that transition. And so what we're doing here is we are analyzing those policy positions as they become more and more detailed, and we're reaching out to our contacts to understand them better and to, to give Canadian views. So in that sense, this is not disorderly from a Canadian perspective. From the job that we have to do down here, right. we are perfectly able to uh, continue to do that job, and we're doing it. Okay, so just last question then. Does the Cana is the Canadian government's position now that this was a legitimate election, that there was no uh, level of voter fraud that could undermine this? In other words, that the case Donald Trump has, and he's legally allowed to do whatever he wants, but his, his conclusion that this is all fraud and that he's won the election, the Canadian government disagrees with that. They believe Donald Trump has no evidence, and you disagree with the president's decision. Is that fair to say? Well, what I can say is that from what we see, and we don't obviously have full insight into all of the, the cases that President Trump is bringing, but from what we see, uh, and from what state's attorneys general and other relevant officials are saying is that there is no evidence of widespread voter fraud. Um, and so we will see those processes uh, play themselves right. out and conclusions will be made. Um, but we have congratulated President-elect Joe Biden and it's our understanding that it's widely understood that he will be the next president of the United States. All right, Ambassador Hillman, I appreciate your time today. I got to leave it there. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.